It's true that John Carter faced a tough ride at the box office back in 2012. Despite having high hopes for the film, Disney experienced a financial disaster that left their wallets feeling the impact. The movie, loosely based on Edgar Rice Burroughs' A Princess of Mars, featured Taylor Kitsch as Captain John Carter, a displaced earthling who finds himself in the middle of a Martian crisis. The film boasted an epic adventure, impressive effects, a stellar cast, and dreams of launching a blockbuster franchise. However, it failed to connect with audiences, and even though it needed to double its massive budget to turn a profit, it ended up tarnishing Disney's reputation. The fallout was significant, leading to the departure of Disney's studio chief and a considerable financial write-off that haunted the company for years. John Carter holds the title of Disney's biggest financial flop. Its budget soared to over $300 million, not even accounting for the additional $100 million spent on marketing. In the end, the movie only managed to eke out about $21 million in profit, a far cry from the astronomical losses incurred. Director Andrew Stanton's penchant for reshooting scenes contributed to the skyrocketing budget, and despite Disney's attempt to salvage the situation with an extensive marketing campaign, confusion among viewers persisted. The scattered marketing approach turned what could have been a unique adventure into a generic fantasy flick in the eyes of the audience. The aftermath of this catastrophe led to Disney's studio chief, Rich Ross, stepping down in the same year. The fallout wasn't limited to the studio, as Taylor Kitsch, who played John Carter, saw his career take a nosedive faster than the character on Mars. So, while a John Carter II might be on the horizon, the financial crater left by the first film has undoubtedly made it a tricky endeavor for Disney. Even though John Carter had a budget as big as Avatar, it didn't make the same megabucks, and Disney kind of abandoned the whole blockbuster idea for a while. They dropped John Carter in 2014, but with Disney's success in live-action remakes, it could have been cool to see it get another shot. They even thought about sequels when they were working on the first one. The sequel would be called Gods of Mars, starting with a twist. Deja, the princess of Helium, tells the story of the first movie to her son, Cthorus, who thinks his dad is dead. Surprise! The grandpa who comes to tuck him in is actually a shape-shifting villain named Matai Shang, who kidnaps the kid and runs away. Then we get the opening credits and John Carter returning to Barsoom after being gone for 10 years. John Carter teams up with his old buddy Tars Tarkas, the green alien with four arms and a heart of gold. They follow Deja's trail to a hidden city underground ruled by the Firstborns, a bunch of fanatics worshipping a goddess named Isis. Plot twist, Isis is actually Matai Shang in disguise, manipulating everything on Barsoom. John Carter aims to expose him and save his son, but it's not easy. Matai Shang turned Carthoris into a grown-up super soldier who doesn't recognize his parents. There's almost a fight where John Carter almost kills his own son, but they have a moment of bonding and realize their family. Deja shows up, they hug it out, and they team up with the Firstborns and other races to defeat the Therns, Matai Shang's evil minions. And they all live happily ever after, until the next sequel. The next sequel in the John Carter series, titled Warlord of Mars, continues Carter's quest to stop the Therns from destroying the planet. The Therns use their shape-shifting abilities to manipulate Martian races into fighting each other, and Deja invents a device to detect them. However, the Therns destroy her device and kill John Carter, who wakes up on Earth as a copy. With the help of Edgar, they return to Mars, and the family carries a Thern detector to the top of the world, following the Thern trail. John encounters Matai, defeats him, and saves the planet, becoming the Warlord of Mars. Unfortunately, these sequels never happened, due to John Carter's poor box office performance. With a massive $307 million production budget, it struggled to reach $281 million globally. Disney admitted to expecting a $200 million loss, leading to them losing the rights in 2014. Andrew Stanton's promising ideas for John Carter 2 and 3 remained unrealized, showcasing the impact of missteps in marketing on big-budget blockbusters. Shifting to another epic saga, Denis Villeneuve's Dune series, a third installment is not officially confirmed. Still, a scene in Dune Part 1 hints at Villeneuve's trilogy ambition, despite uncertainties from the first film's box office. 
In Paul Atreides' visionary glimpse, we see a holy war spreading across the universe. This aligns with Dune Messiah, suggesting Villeneuve's intent to adapt the second book. The film's portrayal of Paul's destiny and transformative visions sets the stage for a captivating continuation in the Dune universe. Paul's destiny unfolds with foresight in Dune Part 1, hinting at a grand trilogy. His spice-induced visions show a future commanding a vast movement and ruling the known universe. Villeneuve's emphasis on Paul as the Kwisatz Haderach aligns with Herbert's narrative, paving the way for Paul's rise to emperor in Dune Messiah. Ericus's transformation into a garden world and the water of life vision add depth to the narrative, promising an awe-inspiring continuation of the Dune saga. Now, rumors suggest that Disney is considering a reboot of the John Carter franchise, which faced challenges in its 2012 release. This potential reboot, possibly for Disney+, Plus, aligns with the studio's trend of revisiting established properties, despite mixed reviews for recent live-action remakes. The speculated reboot could be a strategic move for Disney+, Plus, offsetting losses and creating distance from major franchises like Star Wars and Marvel. If a reboot happens, it might draw inspiration from a planned sequel, Gods of Mars. The sequel story involves Deja narrating events to her child, Carthoris, with Carter returning to Barsoom, facing new challenges, and reuniting with his family. Themes of family, shape-shifting villains, and unity among Martian races were envisioned for this sequel. A potential John Carter III, titled Warlord of Mars, was also outlined. It depicts Carter's battle against the Therns, exploring political manipulations, Deja's inventions, and a final confrontation with Matai Shang. The narrative delves into themes of identity, deception, and Barsoom survival. While these sequel details offer insights, their realization depends on factors like market trends, audience interest, and Disney Plus success. As of now, it's speculative, and official announcements from Disney are awaited to confirm the fate of the John Carter franchise. The potential reboot of the John Carter franchise suggests that Disney is willing to revisit and reinvent the property for a new audience. This strategy aligns with Disney's broader approach to leveraging its existing intellectual properties for its streaming service Disney+. Plus. The platform has become a key battleground in the streaming wars, and Disney aims to captivate audiences with a mix of nostalgic content and fresh takes on established franchises. Rebooting John Carter for Disney+, Plus could offer the studio an opportunity to explore the Martian world once again, but with a different creative vision and possibly a more serialized storytelling format suitable for streaming. The flexibility of the streaming platform allows for a more extended narrative exploration, potentially diving deeper into the rich source material of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Barsoom series. The incorporation of elements from the planned sequels into the reboot indicates a desire to continue and expand the story rather than start afresh. These sequels, as envisioned by Andrew Stanton, promise to delve into complex themes and further develop the characters, providing a roadmap for potential story arcs in the reboot. As of now, these developments remain speculative, and fans will have to wait for official announcements from Disney to confirm the fate of John Carter on Disney+. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Your suggestions for future videos are always welcome in the comments below.